So a poster is the single most dramatic typographic application in design. And a po uh, the purpose of a poster is to communicate a message. It's usually seen when someone is on the move, it has to engage and capture their attention. And often it's competing, a, competing with a lot of other things. So there's visual clutter everywhere and a poster has to sort of grab our attention and make us look. Posters are often hung in public places. They're seen from a distance. And so the designer has to consider where will it be seen and how close will the viewer be? There's always visual hierarchy because the information has to be easy to see and interesting. It has to catch the viewer's attention long enough to communicate the message. And it has to make an emotional connection. There's also um, some te technical considerations. Posters have to be printed at a resolution that looks good. So that's um, sort of the standard for that is around 300 DPI. And then as a designer, you're gonna think about what audience do you want to attract? Who is your audience? And does this design attract that audience? In 1776, um, posters weren't really uh, anything more than just public decrees. And they were called um, broadsides. And a broadside is a one-sided page printed with movable type on a letterpress, usually using cheap paper. And these documents were used to issue public decrees, new laws, and general announcements. They were posted in town squares. And some traditional broadsides were also illustrated with small, simple engravings, usually woodcuts. Eventually, posters became useful tools to advertise uh, events and businesses. And this happened um, along with some technical advancements in the printing process. The three stone lithographic process was sort of a printing breakthrough. And so these early subject matter um, for poster design usually dealt with Parisian nightlife and theaters and cafes. And they were really beautiful because they were designed by um, painters of the time. And they were so popular, they were often stolen off of the walls as soon as they were hung. The first movie poster ever made is believed to be an 1890 French lithograph printed by Jules Charette to promote the short film Projections Artistique. So one thing to think about is where will the poster be hanging? Where will the audience be standing? And who is the audience? This was a series of posters um, designed uh, using really simple graphics and uh, typographic visual hierarchy. And it, they're kind of cool because they have this really experimental approach to the layout. And this was um, these were done for a CCAC Institute and you can see that there's a lot of sort of chaos going inside of the graphic, these overlapping letter shapes, kind of creating their own sense of shape. And then you have uh, the text that's sort of communicating the information right in the center. And I love the graphics. There's sort of a whimsical playfulness about them. I like the way that the designer is really thinking about the negative space as well as the positive. And we've, we've heard about Gestalt, but it's important as designers, especially designing a poster, that we think about Gestalt and how it affects our brains. So when we group things uh, together, we create new meanings. For example, you see six triangles in a row, and with triangles grouped, we can recognize the Star of David or a contemporary gang symbol, depending on our realm or our experience. So if you have too many elements that do not unify with one another, your audience cannot take in this visual information. The law of Gestalt works really well here. Our senses sort of react to the tongue near the heat of the iron. The shapes are similar. The tongue and the iron are sort of the same shape and they're pointing to each other. So there's this real sense of uh, the relationship between the tongue and the iron, even though they're completely different and really not related at all. The way they're designed in this, in this poster 
makes us feel like there's a connection. This is an example of bad design. Your brain wants to define or figure out what's going on, but if there's too much chaos, then our brains and our eyes just turn away and we'll stop trying to look. We want to make sense of what we're seeing. So there's kind of interesting things that happen with the brain when we have um, like positive, negative shape ambiguity. So our brain can kind of shift its perception of this image. And you, when you first looked at the image, you might have seen the faces or you might have seen the vase. And it's kind of interesting how your brain sort of shifts back and forth between the vase and the faces. So the positive and negative, negative of this um, design is sort of flip-flopping back and forth. If it's really complicated, sometimes it's really, it's almost impossible for people to see uh, the opposite. So for example here, I don't know if everyone can see it, but there's this face, this beautiful woman, and this is her hair, and there's a feather, and then she has her profile with her eyelash and her little nose and her beautiful jawline. And then the negative of that is a face of an old woman with a giant nose and an extreme chin. So I don't know psychologically what it means uh, when you see one or the other image first. And some people can't see both of them. They can only see one of them. No matter how hard you try to show them, they just can't see it. So if you have a lot of uh, different images or different graphical elements, you need to figure out a strategy to organize them so that you don't turn the brain off or make it feel so chaotic or so unconnected that the brain doesn't even want to look. So form and content, two things to think about in design. Form is the way something looks and content is the message or information meant to be conveyed. And, you know, let's pretend that we can't read the text at all. Even if you can't read the text, you still get a sense in this design of the light, joyous mood of the message. Now look at this design. Without being able to read the text, I still see that this structure conveys a more conservative message. It's more powerful. Powerful in the sense that it's um, sort of serious. There's something serious happening in this message. And then lastly, this design could indicate anger or violence, even to viewers who cannot understand the content. So the, the designer is conveying meaning using both form and content. Hierarchy. Hierarchy is established by creating a clear focal point. This viewer recognizes the ordering system of information. If the visual hierarchy is unclear, nothing is communicated and the result is visual muddle. So we have the centered title. That's kind of the primary focal point. Next, the medium sized text, probably the black text here. And third, the upper left. And here's a larger example of that. So in this design, the image of the hand creates a strong visual impression. And although it fills the cover, it does not dominate the composition. The reduced value of the image contrasts with the white title treatment, which elevates the typography to be the focal point. In addition, there's sort of this um, subordinate textural type kind of going throughout the space here that sort of adds a third element depth to the design. And this is a good example of using sort of an, a color as a base and the pink would be that color. And then you're sort of laying the type on top and you're picking colors that maybe contrast with the pink. And you're then repeating those colors. So there's sort of a sense of, um, visual connect connectivity, and then you're thinking in terms of scale also for visual hierarchy. So you are going to be designing your own poster, but it's going to be really specific. It's going to be an educational 
typeface design poster. So first you want to find a typeface that's um, historically significant. Then you want to research the designer that created it or the designer that it's inspired by. And you're going to have some really specific requirements. You need to include all of the letter shapes in the design. You need to include um, numbers from one to nine in the design. And you need to include at least a paragraph of text about the designer. And then you have to have um, some visual hierarchy going on. And you also want to include a illustration, a drawing, or a photograph of the designer. And then you want the name of the typeface and the name of the designer to be included in the design. So those are sort of your requirements. And uh, what I want you to do this week is just explore, have fun, sketch, and I want you to finish all of your research. So you want to have all of the text that you're going to include. You want to have um, the typeface, all of the letter shapes, and you want to have the numbers one to nine. And there's lots of different ways that you can approach this project, but the end result is going to be a beautiful poster, a beautiful educational poster that informs someone about this typeface and also about this designer and their contributions um, to the world of design.